Welcome to oh, note taking class. Uh oh. Yes. Uh oh. Who remembers taking notes for research projects in other grades? I do. What do you remember doing? Um, plants. Plants. How did you take notes? Um, like we looked online and we took, like we wrote out, we wrote it, we wrote down um on like little index cards. Oh my God. We wrote down on little index cards, um, what we knew. What we knew, and then um, like we kind of put them. What did we do? Did we like? We didn't know we didn't know oh yeah, we put them into this, but like this folder that has it out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we put it in, and when we are all done, we made. We had certain things to look for. We had certain things to look for. How big is it? How big is your planet? How? What color is it? Is it gas? Yeah. Yeah. What did we What did we call those things? Notes. Before the notes. Right. What are the questions? questions. Research day. questions. Oh, Hi, Seven. Who do you need? Okay. Oh, bye -bye, Great answer. <coughs> hey, my friend. Great answer. Yes. Okay. Do you want to add to it, sir? Yeah. Um. I remember. Um. In third grade, um, we did work on these. Um. Salamander, and um, <coughs> I remember um, I um, kind of did the same thing as Joe, and I took uh, I brought a whole bunch I took a whole bunch of index cards, and I wrote down um, my questions on them, and then I um, um, and then I looked them up online and wrote down the answers on another flashcard, and then. Um, and then look at the questions and try to remember the answer and then look at the and, and then look at the um, answer flashcard and see if I got the answers right. Okay. So flashcards are used more for studying than for research kind of thing. Yes, ma'am. Uh, last year last year, well, when we were studying planets, um, we had envelopes with questions on them and we had to uh, have at least six no, at least five uh, index cards in them with answers to that question. In second grade, I remember us doing an animal project, and um, we had we kind of did the same thing for the like the planets. We'd get index cards and we'd write down notes on them. And whether you're in second grade or fourth grade or tenth grade or twentieth grade. Organizing your notes is what's key. And index cards are one way that people have used for a long time because you can put short pieces of information and then you can rearrange the cards when you go to do your rough draft and rearrange the, where, the order you want the sentences, the facts, and the paragraphs in. Yes, ma'am. In third grade, when we did it, I also wrote some stuff down on the computer and like saved it on the Yep. Those are all good ways. There are many different ways of taking notes, just like there are many different ways of um, reading for understanding or doing almost anything. But some of the things, and you're going to have to find your best way, but there are some important things to keep in mind. And the two no's of note taking that I posted over there, but I also have them here, is know your question. That's important. Know what your question is, because otherwise you're going to get caught in. Lots and 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 lots of other information. The other is no sentences. If you're taking notes, you're not writing complete sentences. If you type write in complete sentences, you're more apt to copy. Can you copy when you take notes? No. No. Why not? <laughs> because most things are copyrighted and you could go to jail for that. Okay. Is it right to copy somebody else's work? No, it belongs to somebody else. It's, is it? Say the word loudly, ladies. Plagiarism. Plagiarism. Copying somebody else's work. It's a form of stealing. However, can you copy it to find the spelling of a word? Yeah, definitely. Copy, if you, and if you don't copy for the spelling, then I'm going to be really angry. Um, kind of thing. I have a couple of things I want to show you up here, and a couple of things we're going to do together. You are going to need your paper and pencil during the second video. The first video 
Um, and um, can you get the lights in the back, please? And will you get the lights in the front, please? The first video, um, there's no sound, um, so I'll be talking. And it's about trash and treasures. And that, um, this is another set of rules about note-taking. One, two, three, note-taking. One, read each sentence. Two, decide if it is trash or treasure. <coughs> and write the treasure on your graphic organizer or your index card. What's a graphic organizer? I just realized I didn't do that. It sometimes it's called a mind map. <coughs> Sometimes it's with rectangles like this and organized like that. So birds, and I might do characteristics. Characteristics and habitat, and then trees. I might list it like that as a graphic organizer. Another kind is it's in the middle and then you have, so does this look familiar to you? These things? The fancy name is graphic organizers. They're also called mind map tools. It's a way of organizing your information visually. So those are some things that, and you'll need to decide which way helps you best take notes and remember things. So here's the trash and treasure idea. And okay, ought to take notes for your research. <coughs> when we research, words are like the symbols on the pirate's treasure map. We only want the words that help us, or the treasure, and we ignore the other words. Treasure words are words that answer a question, that knowing your question is key when you're doing research. Trash words are all of the other words on the page. They might be good words, but they do not answer the question. Nobody should be writing anything yet. You should just be listening. To take notes, you read and understand your questions. You read the article, website, or book one sentence at a time and decide if there are any treasure words. So, what does a poison dart frog eat? What's the key word? Eat. Say it again. Eat. Everybody. Eat. Okay. Eat. So that's the key word that we're looking for. That's the treasure word. So then we go to the facts. Here's the web page. There's books on the list of so stories here, names, so we have to read the information one sentence at a time to look for the answer to our question. At the first sentence, poison dart frogs are small, colorful frogs. Does that answer our question? No. No, so we ignore it. We might be interested in it later, but for this question, no. We do not go to it at all. We just stop and go on to the next sentence, which is, they live in warm, humid habitats. No. Does that answer our question? No. Interesting if we were doing habitats. But our question is about food, about eating. <coughs> the third sentence is, oh, reminding ourselves, what does a poison do dart frog eat is what we're looking for. So we go to our next one. Yes. Poison yes. dart frogs eat meadow plankton and small insects. Yes. Yes. yes, that's got the information we want in it. There are four treasure words there. Meadow, plankton, and small insects. Four important note-taking words. Other, but the other words are trash words? Yes. We only need this in our note. Meadow, plankton, and small insects. We only need those because we just want to get the information down. Four sentence. Poison dart frogs got their names because some tribes in the rainforest took the poison off of the frog and put it on their eyes to make deadly weapons. Nope. Answer our question. Interesting fact, but not what our research question is about. So we're not going to do that. We might come back to it later if our question has to do uses, how humans use frogs. Poison dart frogs can be almost any bright color. Mm -hmm. no. So in that whole paragraph on poison dart frogs where there was information, oodles of information, the only <coughs> things that answered the question were meadow plankton, small insects. 
Those are the only two words. So we might write down on our paper, on our index card, for the question eat or food is the, those four words. So this is the steps you need to take when you're taking notes. You think them. You don't have to do them this slowly once you get used to it. Are there any questions mm -hmm. about this so far? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Um, well, the thing is that, like, with, um, so sh um, should we focus on one question at a time when we're reading something? Yes. So like, so like, it, for example, like for that one, if we were, <coughs> if you were doing a product of poison dart frogs, do you like focus on first question, what do poison dart frogs eat first? And then once you've read through the paragraph and gotten all of the information you need, then you go <coughs> into like, where do poison dart frogs live? And then you'd reread the paragraph and get all the treasure words that you need uh, that would help you for that, right? Yes, that is exactly right, because, um, it helps keep you focused and organized. And to get through your information quickly, you uh, do the research in the most efficient and logical way possible. That is what you need to do. Um, friends who just came in, we were talking about... Note-taking? Note-taking, exactly. And if we had... And I'm just going to recap it really quick. If our question is, what does a poison dart frog eat, what are we looking for? what they devour. What they devour, what they eat. So we have to look at all the information at slowly, one sentence at a time, breaking it down to go faster. So the first sentence, poison dart frogs are small colorful frogs. Does that have anything to do with our question? No. So we're going to skip that one sentence and go on to the next one. And the next one, they live in warm, humid habitats. Does that answer our question? No, so we're going to skip that. Uh, third one is they eat metal plants <coughs> and small insects. Does that answer a question? Yep. Yes, so that is what we write down. That's the only thing we need to write down is meadow plankton and small insects. When we take that. I saw plankton on the in the sea. There's another question for you. Obviously it doesn't. So this other note taking is a little bit more um, humorous but goes over the same kinds of information in a different way, and sometimes repeating information in a different way helps us understand it better. And welcome back to the McDougal Inform Action News. I'm your anchorman, Trent Boswell, and our top story today is Information Storm R11 Research Again, and we're going to cover some simple tips that might just save your academic life. Now, we all love to do research, but all across America, people are wondering how we're supposed to get the information out of our books and onto our papers. <laughs> well, I used NCY's out to find some good information, but I couldn't tell if I was supposed to copy it down, or which parts I really needed, or if I was just supposed to let the teacher do it for me. And was that before or after you were abducted by aliens? Why, that was right before. <laughs> As you can see, note-taking can be serious business. Now we've got our in-house expert, Dr. Barrington Grundabar, here to tell us about the do's and don'ts of note-taking. Dr. Grundabar. Yes, Chief, I can hear you. It's Trent. Oh, sorry, Steve. Now, there are some things you must remember when you're taking down notes. Number one. Always match your thought to your question. Make sure what you're writing down is important for your paper. If your research question asks, what are some physical features of the mighty guinea pig, which one of these facts should I write down? Any ideas? Yeah, I can see that the only facts that refer to the physical features of the guinea pig are this one and this one. Now try it yourself with the paper I've provided. Take a look at it. Look at the question at the top and uh, find out which facts refer to that question. Okay, take five minutes. Oh, take three minutes. Three minutes. We have, we have uh, much to do. So, which crops are grown in Indonesia? And you don't have to write this one down. This one you're going to tell me. Most of the population practices Islam. The staple crop is rice. 
The ancestors of modern Indonesians migrated to the islands from mainland Asia thousands of years ago. Indonesia is also a major supplier of natural rubber made from rubber trees. Indonesia held free elections in 1999. What's the one or two or three or four or five facts that you need to know? Can you read it out loud, please? Stable crop is rice. Okay. So that has the word crop in it, so you know that matches the question. Is there anything else there? Indonesia is also a major supplier of natural rubber made from rubber trees. And why do you think that's a crop? The word isn't in there. No, but it's talking about a plant. And a plant is a, <coughs> is a crop. So you need to use your knowledge of things. Yes, sir. You have a question? Um, um, the thing is, um, what if you come across a, que a question and you can't tell if it has a fact that um, help you that help support your question or if, or if it doesn't have any? If you can't find it, then it doesn't have any. But, no, like, if you can't figure it out, like, uh, it seems like it might, it might has, it might, um, be it has a fact, but you can't be sure. Why would you not be sure? I'm trying to understand your question better. I don't know. Do you have any answer to help us with that? Um, maybe if it was like worded that differently, maybe you should just like write it down just in case. Yep. You could do the just in case method, just in case I need it. You could also do the, huh, I'm not quite understanding this text, this information. Maybe I'll go talk to somebody else who can help me understand it. Sure. Teacher is one or a, f a friend, a classmate. Okay, so we've already done this part. We've answered this question above. And... Very good. Did you have any trouble with that? Oh, if you did, do not worry. You can always talk to your teachers about it. Now, point number two. Only write down the important parts of your fact. This is important. The trash, the treasure words, not the trash words. I didn't words. need all of these extra words like these and these and these articles here. I just need to know enough to remember the information. Now, let's pick out the important parts of this sentence. If my sentence is, the guinea pig is a diurnal animal most active during the day, I can pick out these articles here because I did not need them in my notes. I also know that the guinea pig is an animal already, so I just need the guinea pig and diurnal. If I have a hard time remembering the meaning of diurnal, I might include the words active and day. Your notes are all about what you can understand. It is alright if they are written in short bits or have code words or abbreviations. So if I read my notes and that's they say guinea pig and diurnal. I know the guinea pig is a diurnal without having to copy down the whole sentence. Now you try. Look at this sentence and write down just the important parts. Okay, now, on your notes right minute. now. Go ahead. On your page 19, write, write a note for the bassoon is a double reed wind, in, wind instrument and is the base member of the oboe family. Write down the important parts. Write down what note you would take if that was the sentence you were reading. Alright, now who can tell us what that wrote? How about you? Yeah. Is the kid with the sneakers and the t-shirt? Okay, kid with the sneakers and the t-shirt. That's me. Okay, so what did you write down? Um, I am finished it, but what? The bassoon is a double reed instrument and part of the oboe family. Okay, did you write a sentence? Not a complete one. Your whole life, I've been telling you. Why did write you write complete sentences, and now for note taking, I'm saying don't. No sentences. Yay. Also, I didn't complete. Back in the Hannah. Um, I put double reed instrument and oboe family. Okay. 
Yes, sir. I wrote bassoon equals double reed instrument, bass member of oboe family. Okay, anybody have something, a variation? Over there, ladies. Uh, bassoon double reed member of oboe. Okay. I wrote bassoon equals double reed instrument, bass member of oboe. Okay, and yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Okay. Bassoon is a bassoon. Double reed wind instrument, part of oval. Okay. There is a time <coughs> that you want to do what our friend here did. And that you need to use quotation marks. Sometimes, either what the author has written is so profound, so important, so amazing that you want to do it as a quote. And then it's important to copy it exactly and put it in quotation marks. The other time to do it is if, okay, the bike is red. How many different ways can you write, the bike is red? Red bike? Many, many. Red, not, not too many. So if there's a way, there's, you cannot think of another way to word it. Again, write it exactly and copy it. And that would be okay to do that too. But we would cite it. We would say it was there. And we would talk, and I could also see if I could help you reword it. If, but if we can't reword it, sometimes you have to quote it. So that is an okay way. Okay, let's keep going with Dr. Wunderbar. Very good. Now, I have a bit of a challenge for you. Can you look at these notes I have written down? Okay. Can you tell me what the original fact was? What's the fact? Oh, oh. Write it down I want on you paper. to write down a complete sentence using just these few words. Give it a try. Write down the sentence or two. What sentence could you write? Okay, sentence. Who wants to share their sentence? It's okay in the back. Um, nice and loud. Tungsten has a high melting point and is also used in light bulbs. Great. Next to her, yes. Um, tungsten has a high melting point as a, and is used in light bulbs. Yep. Do. Um, the tungsten metal has a very high melting point and used for light bulbs. Great. Yes, sir. Tungsten has a high melting point, so it is often used in light bulbs. Great uh, variation. You could also start with the word light bulbs. Light bulbs. <coughs> yeah. Light bulbs have tungsten because it has a high melting point. Yeah. Great job. I, I stuck. Even if you didn't get it all written down, do you get the idea? Yes, sir. Um, I studied tungsten and 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 um. It was earlier in this fifth grade. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody have any questions about what they're asking you to do for the note? Nope. No. I just didn't know what tungsten is. Um, if you have your own method that's not the trash or treasure or um, this method, uh, could, um, can you use a different one? If it's an effective method. Okay. So if you have one that you're not sure, we can try it, you can talk to me about it, then we'll go for it. Okay. Excellent job. Now let's go back to Mitchell's studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Trent Boswell here. Thank you, Dr. Rundabar. You are welcome, Ray. Now let's go to Scooter Wellington the Third with a recap of some spectacular note taking that happened earlier. So hit me, Boss Dog. All right. So there is this guy, and he is totally looking for some information on how a car engine works. And check it out. He looks at this whole article and was like, "Bro, this is way long." But then he pulls an awesome 380 kickflip and realizes he can look at the subheadings to find the section he wants. Awesome. He goes into the section on engines and finds some facts on the engine. Now, he looked at the sentence and says, Pshaw, why should I write all this down when I can get the important stuff and go drink more Mountain Dews and eat more burritos? So, he totally turns the sentence and says, 
most automobiles are powered by an internal combustion engine. In such an engine, a mixture of air and gasoline enters a two black cylinder through valves and turns it into air plus gasoline through valve two black cylinder. It was totally groovetacular. I'm calling it Spears Research Pick of the Week. Back to you, B Train. Uh, uh, thank you for that, Scooter. Now, hold on. Let's just end. We have Seamus Nagala's Yulong reporting from the field where information stored on 11 has just taken a sinister turn. The internet is a real mess out here. Turns out that one research searcher wrote down some information but didn't write where he got it from. Apparently, that shameless act of plagiarism has offended the whole universe itself. And there is terraforming in space time continuum. Oh, why didn't that person cite their source? That's terrible, Chance. I know, right? Here to keep you from destroying the universe again is Ernest with a boss of the fancy bottom Kinger Kitten with the McDougal Information News, Accu News Info Chicken. Thanks, Trent. I'm here with the Accu News Info Chicken to show you all how to cite your sources right there on the note sheet. Now, you should have a copy of your T457 note-taking apparatus. And at the bottom, you'll have to find a place you to write down your sources this? title. Author, publisher, in place of publication, copyright date, or last update, and URL if it's website. So, <laughs> if I got a lot of information from the book, The Little Red Hen, I would put The Little Red Hen in the title. Then I'd fill in the rest of the, of the information. I'd find the book's author. In this case, Heather Forrest. I'd find the publisher, Little Folk, the place of publication, Little Rock. The, the copyright date, which is 2006, and since this book is there, no URL. All right, back to you, Trent. <laughs> that chicken is so great. But now, to recap our top story, we've learned today that we must find the facts that answer our questions, copy down the important parts, just the important parts, and always cite the source you get your information from. I'm Trent Boswell, signing off. <laughs> Okay, so if you are looking for a factual question, information, what do horses eat, for example? I went to a web page, and normally I just show you the web page, but I made it <coughs> bigger here so that you could see it. Uh -oh. Okay, so what do. Uh oh. They are getting me a new dongle. They figured out that it's the dongle. Sorry. What's a dongle? A dongle is the connecting piece. Here. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we'll have to do part uh, plan B. So here, here it is. I'm going to tell you three facts. You write down what answers the question. Remember, the question is what do horses eat? Horses can sleep both lying down and standing up. <coughs> Horses can run shortly after birth. Horses are herbivores, which are plant eaters. Oh, I thought you said herbivore. Hey, I got it back up. So there's some facts. Write down, take notes for the question, what do horses eat? Take notes. Oh, I thought we just put the actual thing. No, just take notes on the, that answers the research question. What the horses eat? Anybody want to share what they wrote? Go for it. Plants. Okay. And if your notes were organized. So you knew that your question was, what do horses eat? That is all you would need to have in your notes. What do you have? Horse equals herbivores. That means you need to know what herbivores meant. But that works. Yes, sir. Horses eat meat because they are herbivores. 
Okay. Just because you didn't use an uppercase sentence at the beginning, it's still a sentence, right? What some people, and this is okay, some people, it, the big general rule is no sentences when you take notes. But some people really can't not write a complete sentence because it sounds weird to them. Or they can't understand it afterwards. If that is you, you can write complete sentences. And when I say no complete sentences, I'm saying it actually to make your job easier, but if your brain has to see that complete sentence, then stick with it. Yes? You wrote herbivores. You wrote herbivores. Great. I wrote horses equals herbivores equals plant eaters. Great. Now, occasionally, you end up, those are, that's a factual question. But sometimes, there might be an interpretive question. And... So the interpretive question that I looked at with the last class was, let me see if I wrote it down. Oh, why was it hard for African Americans to play professional sports? I can't just say because my brain told me I have to do research. So I Googled and I got this, I'm going to go back one way. When I Googled it, I got two Wikipedia articles about the uh, about football and NBA, baseball for ESPN, Jackie Robinson, Jackie, Jackie Robinson, Jackie, Jackie, Jackie Robinson. But I'm still not getting all sports because my question was about professional sports. <coughs> Negro League, which is baseball. Oh, here's something from the Clark Science Center, and it, it might be about more than just one sport. So I'm going to go there first. So I go there and I go, oh, look at all these words here. How am I ever going to get through it? What do you need to do? Read. Movers. Uh, subtitle, subheading, subtitle. Subheadings would be one way to organize it. Another way. Skim, look for those key words. I like to call it gutting a goat. Gutting a goat. Tell me more about that. Um, find all the... Um, or like kind of like skinning a goat to like getting yep. all the like good meat out of the goat and then throwing all the stuff away. That's yeah. Away. So it's like, yeah, that's that's like trash and treasures. Just another analogy for it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a, all of those. I'm gonna skim for the for the good stuff, the good meat. I'm going to also look for subheadings and titles. Observation. Oh look, I'm so excited because there's some tables here. So in NBA, it went from 1949 with no black players to 1998 where 77% were all were professional basketball players were black. Similar statistics in the NFL. In the uh, black, uh, in the baseball league, huh, look at baseball. 1946, there were no blacks. 1998, 15% were black, huh. But in football and basketball, there's significantly more. What about in hockey? Huh? What about in... Huh? I wonder why that is. That's a good question that I might want to check out. Oh, here's a subtitle. Certain sports seem dominated and others by African Americans and others by whites. So that's a paragraph I'm going to want to read. And what reasons have been given for these demographic anomalies? Anomalies means differences, and demographic means um, what it looks like for gender or race or age. So I'll, I can find the information better, but a fact question is going to be relatively easy to find your answer. An interpretive <coughs> question, you're going to have to look harder and longer, and one question might lead to another question. So you're going to have to, you might have to look harder look in more different places, read more. Yes, sir? Um, I know why the NHL is not up there, because um, I'm pretty sure, not completely sure, but they allowed black, um, African American people to play, play from the start. Play, <coughs> play from the start, pretty much, because 1927 and around that time was like the base, and that's when the first African American player played hockey, and, I, and there aren't, whites kind of dominated, 
interesting because yeah, in the last class, one, one of the and nobody has given me citations where, where the information is coming from. But in the last class, one of the students said he only knew of two African American players in the National Hockey League. I know. And we talked about why that might be. Why would hockey be easier for African American kids to learn to play when they were younger <coughs> than basketball? Um. Because in Africa, if they move to America, um, and they move and they were one of there's not much ice there, so they couldn't, and there were probably not much as skates, so they couldn't really ice skate that well. Because they didn't do it the <coughs> time. Yeah, so it wasn't Okay, kind of that's, so, that's one reason. Another reason? Because um, they play basketball, the hoops that pie and children are not tall. Okay, you have enough. That, these are all good ideas. Here uh, is. Because, um, like in basketball, there are a lot of rules against <coughs> the, there's dribbling, certain kinds of passing, traveling, double dribbling, shooting, all that and more. And in hockey, it's basically it's basically just ice skating around a rink with a puck, trying to get it that into a puck. That is not called. true. It's basic hockey. It's no, it's not. Actually, actually checking. Actually, <coughs> both sports have an equal number Off of side. rules. And most of the but think about this. Two, stop. Stop. I want you all to think about this. To play basketball, what do you absolutely need to have? Before that. What you need, if, if I wanted to go play basketball, okay, we all know I don't have skill in it. If I wanted to go play to have fun, what would I need? You need to be able to jump. Tall and Okay. Well, but if I... Even more so, even That's more basic. Not true, yeah, you uh, really uh, excuse me. You need a net. A net or a hoop, and a ball. A ball. Do you need anything else, really? Um, kind of. No. No. Nice what, no. What you need to play hockey? <coughs> ice basic ice skates. Ice what skates. else? Um. Does it matter what position? <coughs> no. Just what you need to just no, even. Like okay. Big. You need. Knee pads, hockey socks, jock strap if you're a boy. Um, Not what he meant. No, that is what I meant. Hockey Ho pants, chest, chest protector, protector, elbow pads, helmet, gloves, neck, neck guard, guard is optional, mouth guard, elbow pads, and jersey. Well, mouth guard okay. and, 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 and skates <laughs> and a puck and a uh, and ice time. All and of those animals. things cost what? Oh, and and Money. Together. What do they cost? Money. Money. I said that. And okay. Goals. One of the biggest problems in the world is poverty. Money. It's, mon it's, it's the money issue. And if you are, those of you who um, can, come from families that can afford just about anything you want to, hockey might be a, a thing that you do. Basketball, you just have to find one ball for a whole bunch of people to play. And you just... Yeah. Yeah. So that might be one reason. We don't know that. That These are all theories just like Aurora had a theory and Atticus had a theory um, and Joe had a theory about why people of African-American heritage don't necessarily play.